You can call me stupid. Yes, you can call me sheep. You can say I'm lazy. You can say I'm weak. You think that using her would get to me? And if you're right, then you're in trouble, D. 'Cause I won't break my arm. When it comes to her, you better keep it sealed. Don't you dare say a single word, or I will strike you where it feels. You think that using her would get to me? And if you're right, then you're in trouble, D. 'Cause I won't break my arm. Okay, see what we have hanging here? We have some belts. <clears throat> we have some belts. We're all wired up. And look at this. Watch the, uh, watch the tracking arm. No hands. How about that? That's the biggest design thing I've seen. And I, I've watched so many belt grinder builds. Because, you know, before I go do anything, I research the hell right out of it. I want to make sure I'm going to be doing it right. I need my coffee. I want to make sure it's getting done right, you know, and, and sometimes you really have to sort through a lot of BS on YouTube to get to good information. And there's some really good, there's some really good build videos out there. Houseworks is a really good one. He's doing some amazing stuff with the, uh, with the grinder that he's building. Um, but the big design thing that I haven't liked watching these is I see these guys just cranking on that, pushing down on the top and a knob or something like that. Some of them have a, uh, an actual piston. I've dealt with pistons like that for work quite a bit on uh, refrigeration doors and they do, they give it up, especially the cheap ones. But uh, I've never seen anybody put a foot pedal on there for adjustment like that or for uh, taking the belts on and off. So I'm going to get you guys a close up of this foot pedal. It's really crude. I slapped it together in about 10 minutes. It's not even painted or anything like that, but it's going to work. It's going to work well. And as long as it doesn't impede how this thing goes up and down, it's not enough weight on it to really screw with it. So we'll see how she goes. I'll get you a close up. So the design on this is about as simple as it gets. I just made a half-assed hinge here, a couple pieces of pipe, some... Uh, now this is a big three quarter inch rod coupling here. So that's all welded on. Piece of two inch square stock with half inch holes drilled through it just so we have a little wiggle room so I don't catch this rod up here on the hole inside. I had to goof around with that before. But all I have to do, just step on it. That's perfect, it goes back up where it wants to go. I don't have anything hanging here. That's what I'm after because I'm not I'll be, I'll experiment around, see how tight the belt has to be on here, but let's throw a belt on here, see how it goes. Let's test fire this thing up and just go with it. So I got a kit of two inch belts from uh, Red Label Abrasives. Um, no, nobody's endorsing this video or anything like that. Boy, look how easy that is. I like that. I think maybe get this out just a little bit more. Nice and tight. Very nice. So if I want to take the belt off, just step on her. Love it. The tracking adjustment works well. How about that? Let's ramp it right up to full speed.
not too shabby. That's half inch plate steel. That'll do. Man, I like that, guys. Wow. Holy cow. So let's see what it'll do with some high carbon stuff. I'm going to draw a knife here that I'm not super happy, but let's see what it'll do without the tool rest. Pretty sweet. This thing just worked great. I, uh, I I can't get over how well that worked. It just I ran it for a good straight hour, and what I ground in that hour just dicking around. The motor's not even warm. It's not bad. You get a little bit of warmth on the pulleys from the uh, from the friction of the belt, I would imagine, but it's not too bad. When I got ground out here, and it was probably hard to see, this would have taken me three or four nights after work on the equipment I was using. I just did that because I ground on a bunch of other stuff too. This is probably half an hour on this machine. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, yeah, if you can't tell, I'm pretty happy with this. I uh, got nothing but love for this, man. So anyway... Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Again, the, uh, the model that I base this on, you can find on dcknivesblogspot.com. And uh, that guy has probably the most detailed article on building something like this that I have found. He has the measurements in there. He just did a phenomenal job. Another good channel to watch who just built one of these. And actually, uh, he uh, upgraded his... It's amazing what he's done. It's a channel called Housework, in, um, or Houseworks, one or the other. And he did, he did just an amazing job with his, and he keeps building stuff for it. That guy has like a machine shop set up, and um, really good. I mean, so to be honest, to build one of these, let me make sure my mic hasn't died yet. Oh, that's good. To be perfectly honest, to build one of these... Um, 
Guys, I did most of it with an angle grinder and a welder. Uh, if you had to bolt something together, you could. I've seen a few people do it like that. It's not, um, it's not nearly as complicated as I thought it was going to be. There's nothing complicated about this thing. The biggest thing I needed help with was the uh, measurements because I didn't have the motor when I built it. I didn't have the belts. So I couldn't really mock up what I needed to, uh, to make it. So I kind of threw caution to the wind and trusted the measurements off of uh, that DC Knives blog spot. And I'll tell you what, they were right on. The only thing I had to change, the platen assembly and the tool rest, I had to shorten it about by about two inches, both of them, in order to get the belt and everything to fit. But uh, like I said, that's just awesome. That is some of my best redneck welfare engineering I've ever come up with right there. So I did wrap my frequency drive in some filter media. It's nice and tight on there, so that should protect that just fine from the uh, the metal shavings and the dust. That's a uh, that's a Merv 12 filter media, so it's not really going to let anything in there. I mean, it's it has to be ultra fine to get in there. So I think I'm gonna I'm not going to leave the belts on when I'm not using it. I'll take them off for one. I don't want one of the kids to come out here when I'm not home because they're dying to use this thing. I want to get used to it first before I really turn them loose on it. Of course, I'll be right here when they do. But kids being kids, chances are they'd wander out here, hit the run button. The breaker would be shut off to this thing. And I purposely didn't label which breaker it was in the panel box because of children. Yeah, they suck the soul right out of you. But boy, they're entertaining. So anyway, folks... Hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series. We will do a total overview video on this. Look for that coming up soon. And, uh, and then we're just going to move on to, we're starting production mode on our draw knives, and we're going to start listing those up for sale. So have a good one, folks, and I'll catch you on the next one.